chorioamnionitis is the topic. And uh, chorioamnionitis essentially is an infection of the amniotic fluid uh, during pregnancy. And this uh, can lead to some pretty significant consequences. Uh, before I get into all the symptoms, I'd like to illustrate what are some of the risk factors. Part of it is uh, extremes of labor, either preterm labor or uh, uh, long labor. Interestingly, these two extremes are the risk factors. Another risk factor is uh, pathogens that are present that uh, normally can cause STDs. And they can also be responsible for chorioamnionitis. Another very important uh, one that tends to happen a lot is that during the pregnancy, if there has been a lot of uh, digital exams, digital referring to uh, the doctor's finger, if this has been done a lot, this can lead to chorioamnionitis infection. So this is actually very important because the uh, part of the prevention is uh, trying to not do this or trying to do it only if necessary. So now let's take a look at the symptoms and the signs. Well, the good news is there's an absolute list that they have identified that uh, chorioamnionitis um, will present with. Now, the first one is fever. And when I talk about fever, I'm really talking about maternal fever, uh, the, the mother. Uh, temperature perhaps uh, greater than 38 Celsius or 100 Fahrenheit. Uh, the next uh, one has to do with the lab test, and that's the white blood cell count and you're looking at a white blood cell count of greater than 15,000 and that is also maternal. Uh, the next diagnos diagnostic criteria is maternal tachycardia, so uh, referring to increased heart rate and we're looking at about greater than 100 beats per minute. Uh, number four is fetal tachycardia, so the fetus will also have increased heart rate greater than 160 beats per minute. Uh, number five is very important, uh, uterine tenderness well, they're all important, but uterine tenderness is uh, typically worrisome. And then number six is basically where the vaginal discharge is very foul-smelling. So if a woman and uh, her fetus present with all these criteria, then that's definitely um, chorioamnionitis. So let's say you do have a case like that. How would you proceed? Well, the diagnosis essentially involves an amniocentesis. Uh, essentially you have to take a sample of the amniotic fluid and you have to do a culture. And when you do that you will see the presence of bacteria and you will also see in the amniotic fluid I should write that in, culture of amniotic fluid. In the amniotic fluid you'll also see some very specific lab values. You'll see the amniotic fluid has a white blood cell count of greater than 30 and the amniotic fluid would have a glucose uh, count of less than 15 because the bacteria are eating the glucose. So how do you treat this? You have to give IV antibiotics immediately. You can't wait. You shouldn't wait. So IV antibiotics immediately. And uh, the most common regimen is uh, a combination of ampicillin uh, plus uh, gentamicin. And um, you, need it, you need to also deliver. So vaginal delivery. Um, chorioamnionitis is not an in, in indication for cesarean, so there's no reason to do a cesarean. So just start the IV antibiotics immediately and uh, allow the vaginal delivery. So let's take a look at some vignettes, see what this looks like. A 25-year-old, a G1P0 at 29 weeks gestation with history of STDs, presents with fever and tachycardia. On physical exam, her uterine is very tender and she has foul-smelling vaginal discharge. Fetal monitor shows the fetus to also have tachycardia. Stat labs show a maternal WBC count of 16,000 white blood cells. Amniocentesis with culture of amniotic fluid is performed and shows presence of bacteria. Glucose level less than 15, WBC count greater than 30. Most likely the diagnosis is. Well, you couldn't get a more classic clinical vignette. You've got fever. You've got the WBC count greater than 16. You have the maternal tachycardia. Fetus also has increased heart rate. Foul-smelling foul vaginal discharge. And let's see if this uterine is tender. There you go. So you have pretty much everything that points to chorioamnionitis. 
And then the last one, a 39-year-old woman, G3P2, at 40 weeks gestation, comes to the labor and delivery ward after a gush of fluid with regular painful contractions every two minutes. She is found to have a rupture of membranes and to have a cervix that is 5 centimeters dilated, a fetus and vertex presentation, and reassuring fetal heart rate tracing. She is admitted to labor and delivery ward two hours later. She states that she feels hot and sweaty, temperature is 38.3, 101 Fahrenheit. She has mild uterine tenderness. Cervix is now 8 centimeters dilated, and the fetus heart tracing is reassuring. Which of the following is most appropriate management of this patient? Well, she's uh, definitely got a long pregnancy. She's got the fever, and she's got the uterine tenderness. Um, the um, chorioamnionitis that she most likely has will need uh, IV antibiotics immediately. And chorioamnionitis is not an indication for cesarean, so choice C and D are out. And um, you, when you do give the antibiotics, you're given IV. That's the mode method um, of uh, giving the antibiotics. So you don't actually inject them into the antibiotic into the amniotic sac. So that's out. So that leaves A and B. Now the question is, do you wait to give the antibiotics or do you give the antibiotics now? Should it be after delivery or now? Well, you have to give the antibiotics immediately. So there's no waiting once you are suspicious of chorioamnionitis. So the correct answer would be administer antibiotics to the mother now and allow vaginal delivery. So choice B.